G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you are having a fantastic day, thank you for tuning in, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user, throwawayfsister, titled, My sister's life is falling apart, and I am happy. I, 40 female, have been a long time lurker on Reddit, never shared my story. This is a typical Reddit story that you'll hear, but I wanted to scream it to the world. Thank God for Reddit. So, my sister, 43 female, Ursula, yes I'm using a villain's name, has always made my life a living hell. She is extremely manipulative and a narcissist. Ursula will be nice to me when she needed anything, but then will ignore me. Growing up, I always thought that we were really good sisters. We did not have the typical sister fights of one being jealous of the other. Now, as an adult, when I think about it, I think she has hated me. She would always give me backhanded compliments like, your face looks better with your glasses, or you have a boy crush? Ew, I thought you were a lesbian. I used to be a tomboy. Growing up, I always strived to be like her. She was everyone's favorite. She was helpful and kind, or at least that's how she made us believe. She would always make me feel insecure about my looks and the people I date. The first boyfriend I had when I was 17, she made me believe that he was not good for me, blah blah blah. I broke up with him, and I know, my fault. I moved out of state for college. My sister went to business school while I studied engineering. I would come home from holidays and would still have to hear all her backhanded compliments. When I was 21, I started dating my ex-husband, Jordan. My sister was dating someone else at that time, so I guess her focus didn't fall on Jordan. Also, Jordan wasn't her type. We dated for three years and then tied the knot. For four years, I have been happy with my life. During that time, my sister announces that she is pregnant. We all thought she got pregnant by her then-boyfriend, Remy. One day, I went to visit her and bring some food for pregnancy. She gave me a key to her place and I went inside without knocking. I had permission from her. The surprising thing I saw was Jordan's shoes outside. I went inside her bedroom because I was feeling a bit suspicious, and yeah, you guessed it, they were screwing butt-ass naked. Long story short, I divorced Jordan. I was still in pain and very devastated. My parents supported me, but their focus shifted way more towards my sister and Jordan. Yes, she was pregnant with his child. It was painful to see them together. I never got a sorry from either of them. They were just like, hm, shit happens, man. I moved away from home. Eight years ago, I got a contract to work in England. I moved there. It was a fresh start to my life. I met Peter, who was a single dad. We fell in love and got married and had a son together. I don't have contact with my sister. I have very low contact with my dad, who gives me all the insight. Jordan and Ursula got married and had two more kids. That's all I knew about them until recently. Jordan cheated on Ursula, and they are having a nasty fight. The cherry on top is that two of their kids are not Jordans, so Ursula hasn't been faithful at all. My dad told me that it's a mess, Jordan and Ursula will get a divorce, but she's pressing for alimony. I hung up the phone and made myself a drink. I'm glad that I am thousands of miles away from all of that drama. My mom had called me too and said that she needs me. But I'm not sure if I'll go or not. As much as I enjoy seeing Ursula's life going to hell, I'm not sure if I want to engage in that drama. Edit, since people are curious and want to know everything, I wanted to add more details. My sister was cheating on Remy. Remy was a really sweet guy. He was very devastated when she heard my sister isn't pregnant with his child, but rather it was Jordan's. Remy moved on and had a wonderful wife afterwards. I still follow him on Instagram. My parents were mad at Ursula, but she's a manipulative biatch, convinced everyone that Jordan coerced her, and said that he would divorce me if she didn't have sex with him. She made it seem like she saved my marriage by screwing my husband, lol. Classic. I got married in London. My relatives couldn't come because of the long distance, but my father did. Mum couldn't come because at that time she had a back surgery. Edit 2, editing again because people have this misconception that my parents were bad. No, they were not bad. They were normal humans. I also understand they were in a tough spot. I mean, you can't just expect a parent to choose between two kids. 
Besides, they were going to be grandparents and cannot leave my sister alone. Yes, she is a biatch, but they never let her get off scot-free. My parents supported me in my divorce and paid for my post-divorce therapy. They cannot cut off Ursula entirely because she was pregnant. My dad and mom have a strained relationship with her and Jordan. They haven't disowned them because of their kids. My dad refused to walk Ursula down the aisle at her wedding, which I did not attend. I did keep in contact with them after I moved to England. They were supportive of me. The reason my mom couldn't come to my wedding, as I mentioned, she had a back surgery. My mom is in her 60s, so she has a lot of health issues. My dad attended. My mom hardly could fly, but she did visit me after my honeymoon. She was devastated that she couldn't meet my son because flying was difficult and then we had COVID. I'm going to my hometown for some business. I would have gone either way regardless of the phone call. I haven't seen my mom and dad for four years now. I miss them. I do hate my sister, but I do not hate my parents. In the comments, Ragadast335 says, The best for you is to watch the drama from a safe distance. Don't get close to the shitstorm. In a way, your sister got revenge for you against her and your ex. Enjoy the spectacle, but don't get involved. OP replies, I might have to go back because of my job temporarily, but I'm not sure if I want to visit my home. I personally wouldn't want to visit either, but if you're guilt-tripped into it, you can show off how you're living your best life. Show up like Snow White, lol. Happy as a clam. Make sure to keep this husband away from this shitstorm. Not saying this because he might cheat or anything like that, but more to save yourself a lot of heartache for in case she decides that she wants a piece of your happiness, because how dare you're living a good life and have things going perfect and well for you. There are many ways that she or the rest of your family can cause drama in your current life. Keep husband and kids far, far away from this crap. Trust me. If your date is cheating on their partner, they will cheat on you when they become your partner. People never learn. I'm happy that you have a happy life and are seeing your sister's pot boil over from hundreds of miles away. Stay clear of that thunderstorm and make yourself some popcorn. Watch for the other side of the pond. Your life, your family, and your money is yours. The clowns, monkeys, and Big Top for that circus have nothing to do with you, and you should offer the same support that you were given. You've moved on, so keep on keeping on and keep your contact low to know. You have peace. Peace is priceless in an unquantifiable way. Having her in your life both then and now didn't, isn't, and won't bring you anything but turmoil. Your family is focused on her historically, and now they can again, just this time without the interruption or inconvenience of, and to, you. And now, on to the update. So I've landed on the soil of my home country with my husband and son. My mom and dad received me from the airport. I was so happy to meet them after so many years. Their faces look pale as if they haven't eaten nor slept for a long time. My mom was happy to meet my husband and kid. Especially my kid because she hasn't met him. I asked them not to tell my sister that I'm here. I'm only here for a few weeks and then I'll be gone. I am currently staying with my aunt. Now on to some insights about my sister. My mom said she is living with her along with her kids. I got some details on my sister. She was having an affair with her former boss who is married and those two kids are actually his. My sister got a beating from the boss's wife. From what I'm hearing, the company her boss works in actually belongs to boss's father-in-law. So yeah, her boss is going to be jobless. And my sister has switched jobs way before this happened, but the affair continued. But because of all this drama, she is literally on the edge to lose her new job too because the company's owner is a good friend with boss's wife. So you can imagine the kind of quicksand that she put her foot to. Jordan has quit his job too because he's adamant on not paying my sister alimony and not wanting to pay child support for the kids that belong to the boss. He will be suing the boss for child support as well. They constantly fight a lot. Jordan is probably going mad because of it, according to my mom. And he was also having an affair with his co-worker. My mom wants to kick my sister out, but because of her kids, she cannot. She hates her, but she doesn't want to punish her kids because they are innocent. Honestly, I feel bad for those kids too. They do not deserve such a mess of parents. Also, just so you know, my parents aren't bad. They have supported me a lot. The only reason they still talk to my sister Ursula is because of her kids. 
I feel bad for mum because she only has a few days, and along with her illness, she probably will be too sick to deal with this. I know my sister will somehow know I'm here, but I'm prepared for that as well. I do not want to see her because I know that I'll be dragged into her drama, but I will enjoy the few weeks that I have with my husband and kid. In the comments, is there a way in your country for your parents to have custody of the kids, even if temporary? Like if the mother gets kicked out of her messy jobless life, but the kids are proven to be safe and well kept with the grandparents. Seems messy to have kids in a position where everyone's cheating on everyone and losing their minds and getting their asses whooped and whatnot. And OP replies, I asked them, but they said grandparents' rights can only be exercised if one of the parents has some kind of drug problem or mental health problem. Narcissism is not a mental health problem, apparently. I would say look into the laws in your country if you can. There must be some case for incompetence and neglect, i.e. can't hold a job. To be honest, my biggest takeaway from this is thank God OP never had kids with Jordan. Why can't people just stay faithful? You want to sleep around? Then don't be in a committed relationship, and especially, don't screw with your family's partners for F's sake, or anyone's partners. Stay single. Yikes. This question drives me nuts. I'm very low contact with my brother. He had his pregnant wife and then knocked up his mistress. It was so messy, and I don't understand why people can't keep it in their effing pants. I actually felt bad for Ursula for a hot second, because people who act like her are typically paralyzed by insecurity and self-hatred, until the husband stealing happened. Screw both these assholes. Looks like karma came back to bite them from where it counts. Cheetah's gonna cheat. I'm waiting for the update where Ursula makes a move on OP's new husband, too. I just don't understand how people can be like that. Cheating on her boyfriend, stealing her sister's husband, though I guess he was a cheater to begin with, so not much of a loss, then cheating on him with her boss, only getting pregnant from affair partners, like she's an animal, only acting out of instinct and not a human, with morals, capable of controlling her own actions. Well, what a very messy life uh, all of those people have, bar OP. I'm just going to continue the sentiment. I'm so happy that OP has remained strong and has carved out a little niche in her life that is perfect for her in this crazy world, despite all of that absolute just uh, trouble happening across the pond. It is so easy to perpetuate those cycles, and it's so amazing to see people break them and escape those chains. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think of this one down in the comments below. Let me know. Our next post is by user Live Appointment 4219 titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to pay for my daughter's wedding because she won't let me walk her down the aisle? I'm a 48-year-old man, and my 19-year-old daughter has always been an independent thinker. I raised her to be independent and to think for herself, which I've always appreciated. However, we recently hit a bit of a snag. She got engaged and decided that she doesn't want me to walk her down the aisle at her wedding. She argues that her mother and I don't own her, therefore we have no right to give her away. I feel hurt by this because we never treated her like an object or a piece of property. Rather, we've tried our best to provide her with a wonderful life. Her stance seems pretty extreme to me, and despite discussions, she's refusing to budge on the issue. I respect her choices, but I feel she's disregarding our feelings completely. As a response, I told her that if she feels that way, then I won't be paying for her wedding. I don't want to come across as controlling or manipulative. It's true, I don't own her. I also don't owe her a fully funded wedding. She can pay for her own wedding if she's insistent on this stance. I'm feeling quite conflicted about this. Am I the asshole? Edit, so this isn't making the wedding about me? Walking her down the aisle, while all eyes are on her anyway, and then sitting down is hardly making the wedding about me. It's about her attitude. She's had every opportunity in life so far, and to exclude us from this day is a spit in the face. It's a rejection of everything we've done for her, sacrificed for her, given her. It's selfish. 90% of wedding traditions and symbolism had roots in things that we don't acknowledge today. Should we stop all of them too? The rings, the flowers, the dress, the wedding party, the cake, the flower girls. A father walking his daughter down the aisle has been about respect, pride, love, and honoring the father and daughter relationship for far longer than it was about ownership. 
Independent thinking does not mean rude or selfish thinking. Being an independent thinker does not give someone the license to disregard or disrespect the thoughts, feelings, and perspective of others. Independent thinking is about maintaining the ability to think critically and form one's own opinions while remaining respectful and considerate of others. It is a balance between asserting individuality and engaging in meaningful and respectful interactions with others. Edit 2. Also note that our relationship is not so weak that this disagreement will ruin our relationship. We are still close with each other in spite of this. There is zero chance of her not inviting us to her wedding, regardless of who pays for it, or cutting off contact and withholding grandchildren. I feel sorry for anyone who suggests that as a possibility. Likewise, there is zero chance of us refusing to go to the wedding or cutting her out of the will. In life, people disagree even strongly. It's a natural part of life. We don't end lifelong relationships over it. Man, I feel like whatever I say here, you guys are gonna cook me in the comments. And for that reason, I'm taking the humble middle ground of no assholes here. I do understand where OP is coming from here, even more so with the edits. It's a bit of a letdown to be like, hey, this is a great little tradition to be a part of, and it sucks that you're taking that away from me. And I also understand where OP's daughter is coming from. She's 19 years old, and she is thinking critically, she is trying to break tradition. That's fine, I encourage that. Though I don't understand why he's funding the entire wedding, uh, that's a bit weird. It is a gift after all, but that's a lot of money if this is your typical wedding. That's a lot of money to be taking away just to not be walked down the aisle. I think both are very extreme in their decisions here. I just don't know why people are getting married at 19. That's so young. Please just live your life a little bit and back up these viewpoints with more life experience behind decisions this heavy that affect people. In the comments, Embarrassed Debate 60 says, I can understand why your feelings are hurt. However, were you planning on paying for the wedding as a gift to your child to celebrate their marriage, or because you would get to symbolically give your child away to a spouse? Were you only going to fund the wedding because you own your child? Therefore, if you don't own your child, you don't owe paying for a wedding. Per your attempt at throwing in your child's face, their stated reason for not wanting to be given away. Your child isn't saying that you treated your children like property, but they probably see the symbolism and where this tradition stems from and don't wish to participate. Try to respect your child's independent thinking and point of view, and you shouldn't expect your children to always compromise their principles because of your feelings. It would be fine to talk with them and share how you feel, but you're the asshole for taking your feelings as a reason to not support your child. That said, I don't think people should expect that weddings are paid for by parents. But if there was a reasonable expectation because you funded a sibling wedding, it's not fair for the gift to be contingent on this one thing that is clearly important to your independent thinker. Maybe you can talk about other ways you can be involved in the wedding, especially as tradition doesn't seem to be that important to your child. Always choose listening and talking it out over threats and ultimatums, and it doesn't count as talking it out if the parties are only talking to convince, not listening and trying to understand the other's point of view. Striped Tomato says, right? Just because he doesn't see her as property doesn't mean the tradition isn't rooting in just that very concept. You're the asshole, OP, and doubly so for then basically holding what should be a goodwill gesture and gift hostage just so you can get your old-fashioned way. Don't act shocked if you're not invited based on this. This tradition originated when women were treated as chattel. A woman was transferred from the ownership of her father to her husband. Father is of course not obligated to pay for a wedding, but it seems disingenuous for him to praise her independence until it clashes with his desires. Seems that he isn't above financial and emotional blackmail. This will definitely have an impact on the father-daughter relationship. There is no way of knowing whether she will choose to go low contact, no contact, as a result, but it sounds like dad is willing to take the risk. OP, you're the asshole. And now, on to the update. For all the you're the asshole people out there, I've decided to give my daughter a gift in the same amount as her older sister's wedding cost. She can use this for whatever she wants. For the not the asshole people out there, thanks. Most of you get it. My daughter has also agreed to figure out a way to include us in a way that doesn't involve giving her away. 
we are still in the early wedding planning stages, and she is almost 20, so she will likely be 21 before the actual marriage. Thanks for the concern, I guess. I approve of the groom-to-be, if that matters to anyone. Don't say that, OP, you're digging a hole if you say that. We disagree, but that doesn't mean that it's a relationship-ending event. My daughter is laughing hilariously at all of you, saying that she will disinvite us from the wedding or cut us off from grandkids. I just feel sorry for you all. That is petty and manipulative, and regardless of what you all say, I've raised her better than that. Yeah, as much as you guys in the comments cook redditors for always jumping to the low contact, no contact, disinvite from the wedding, cut you off from the grandkids. That is quite an extremist way to view things, but I guess different folks, different strokes, uh, different kind of situations in life. Sometimes that is warranted, sometimes that's not. I'm very much glad that in this situation, uh, there was open communication between the daughter and the father, and they have worked something out. They have found a middle ground together. Because yeah, this update gives a lot of information that would have been really helpful in the original post, and would have helped people make judgments, being like, she's not someone that's vindictive and holds grudges against you. She's not going to go scorched earth over this one situation. She knows the difference between actions and words that are petty and manipulative, and where she is right and where she's okay to push back against you. I guess for my final word on this, I'm very happy that things turned out this way, as we've seen in the past, things have gone way worse than this. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments of this one. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I do hope you have a good day, night's sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.